Did you do the first couple here anyways? The first couple here, you have five objects, but you have two identical. Okay? Five objects, two identical. If they were all different, it would be five factorial. That's the arrangements of all of them. Since there's two the same, you need to divide by two factorial because there's this pair that are identical. Similarly, the second one here, you have to do five factorial divided by three factorial because there's three the same there. And then the next one, five factorial divided by four factorial because there's four the same. There's going to be, if you have all of them the same except for one, it's just going to be how many positions you have, right? Because that A could go in any one of the five positions. This is five. Five factorial divided by four factorial is just itself, right? Um, N factorial divided by N minus one factorial, that's always just going to be that number, N, whatever it is, right? Because you divide by everything below it. This is where maybe a problem starts here. Okay, that's where the problem starts. Think about if you had, if we if we did it the long way, we're still going to do it. We have uh, five objects. You have two alike of one kind, right? Which maybe I could just say two Bs and two Cs. That's maybe a better way. Instead of saying two alike of one kind. Uh, okay, five objects, but you have two Bs and two Cs, right? If they were all different, it would be 5 factorial. If you, for this pair, you'd need to divide it by 2 factorial because those two identical ones. But you also need to divide for this pair because that's a different pair, right? They're different objects, so you need to put another 2 factorial in there. You need to divide by both of those. You need to divide by 2 because of, the, of these two identical things. And you have to divide by 2 again because of this. All right? If you wanted to expand that the long way, what you probably would want to do, it, it depends. There's no rule for doing it. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If you have the 2s, 2 factorial, I wouldn't even bother writing the 1s, but you can here. 2 times 1, 2 times 1, right, for each of those. This 2 and this 2 can go with that 4, right? So what's it going to be, 30? I think there are 30 ways you could arrange all of that. You can put it in your calculator. I, I don't want you to have to shy away from your calculator or shy away from doing it by hand, but you should know, you should be able to deal with both here. If we're trying to put that on our calculator, whatever calculator you happen to have, you have to make sure you understand how your calculator works. This is, uh, whoops, uh, three, five. Factorial in this calculator is under the uh, probability thing here, under math. It's right there. 5 factorial divided by, if I do this, number one, I should understand that 2 factorial is the same as 2 because I don't want to waste my time going to get this factorial button, but let's pretend you didn't realize that yet. If I just put it in exactly how it's written here, is it going to work? It is not going to work. This is important to realize. Some calculators maybe, I mean, depending on your calculator, this one it will not work because it does order of operations. It does order of operations. It does factorials before it does division and everything. You know when you learned bed mass in grade 8? You didn't learn an F for factorial. Fred mass or something with F in it, I don't know, right? But factorials come before division and everything. But it's going to do... Uh, division before it does this multiplication. So you need to uh, you need to put in here. I can prove it to you, I guess, if you do this entry. Go back here and put this. Okay, put that in there. You need to you need it to calculate that first. It's 30, right? Otherwise, it's doing this division first and then multiplying it by two. So make sure you know how your calculator works. Question. Yeah, you, you do. I mean, for this, I'm not sure whether we're going to do any no calculator stuff because it's not, like, to me, the, this is not the math part of it. It's the setting it up, right? So it's not like in the trig, there's you have to know exact values and stuff, things your calculator can do. So I, you're right. If it's no calculator, you got to do it the long way, and no one's going to give you crazy numbers. 
people can force you to use to be able to do it by hand if they just give you numbers that are too big for the calculator to handle. It doesn't go very high. As soon as you get to 70, it can't do 70 factorial. So, Anyways, uh, what about this last one here then? There's five objects. There are three alike of one kind. We need to do three factorial. There are two alike of another kind. You need to do that. If you were doing this the long way, like I'm pretty sure you could do the calculator way, so I'm going to do it the long way here because it's actually not that long and sometimes you're safer. So you should really be able to do it both ways here. If you were going to do this the long way, five factorial, I would break it down to stop at three factorial because then I can just cross out that. But then I would expand this two factorial, two times one. The reason I did not expand this one is because I can cross it off with that, right? And the reason I did expand the other one is so I can do this. Common grade 12 mistake is, is crossing off a factorial with a number that's not a factorial. You can't do that, right? If you have three on top and three factorial on the bottom, you can't do that. Okay? You can't. They're different. You can simplify this then. At this point, it's 20 divided by 2. It's 10. I want you to try and convince yourself that this is right by making an organized list for this. Before you go, uh, do we have to? There's only 10. Okay? I'm not making you write out 30. <laughs> if you do it in an organized way, something we weren't good at on day one, if you do it in an organized way, you can do it pretty quickly. I think there's some advantage to having to write out an organized list every once in a while. I will pause this. You're missing one. I would do this in a way, I would move this B over to the, you know, to fill up all the other spots first to make sure you have all the ones where there's a B on the end. Okay, so I would put, I would take this and put it here, here, and here, right? And then keep this in the same place. The rest are filled up with A's, right? I can do that in a second. Then I would start with a B not being in that one. I would start with this. A, A, B, B, A. That. And I would move this B over to, to get all the rest of them, right? Because it could be there or there. Now I've gotten all the ones where there's a B first and all the ones where there's a, a B second, right? So then I want to do these ones. And there are, I, I'm going to keep this one the same, right? And I'm going to move this one. There's only one other one, right, if I move this to the right here, like that. And then the only other one is if I start with the two Bs, right? So this is, uh, I should have put this in there, right? This is uh, all of them then. Move them one at a time, like don't... Uh, you're too busy trying to pronounce these things. Is that what you're doing? Ba 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 ba. Okay, that's all ten of them. Are we okay? Okay, let's write out this formal uh, formula. I'm sure, there's a connection between those two words, formal and formula. Maybe, maybe not. If you have now, this is whenever you write something out in this formal uh, mathematical general type way, it sounds like it's more complicated than it is, right? So there are, let's color code this thing. There are n objects, n objects. There are a objects alike of one kind. There are b alike of another kind another kind, and there are C alike of another kind, and so on, right? I need a fifth highlighter here. I'll use purple next. Okay, we're totally off now. <laughs> and look, that's okay. It looks sort of orange almost, doesn't it? Oh. Okay, well, I'm really happy that that's the, <laughs> that's the thing you're most concerned about here. Okay, what does this formula look like? N factorial on top, okay? N factorial on top. What do I have on the bottom for the A objects alike of one kind? A factorial. 
times B factorial. Thank you. We have to wrap this up in a hurry then. Times C factorial times dot, dot, dot. <laughs> to say there could be more, right? If these, uh, if these dots are confusing you here, put them in brackets, put a time sign. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, but I don't want to get... I realize that. I have 15 seconds, but it's going to be wasted if we sit around thinking that of all this. I've got to highlight it in a hurry. Oh, no. Will he make it? He won't. Are we okay?